Alright guys, welcome to another beer review and uh, we've got a Christmas beer which I did own while I was doing the 12 days of Christmas. Technically because it was a gift from my grandma uh, of all people and uh, I knew I had it but she had to take it, wrap it up and then give it to me on Christmas day anyway because I respect the, the feelings of my grandmother over my raging alcoholism. But um, yeah, so I could have easily reviewed this as part of the 12 Days of Clueless, and now I think I'm going to be reviewing a few Christmas beers uh, after Christmas. Doesn't really matter. A beer review is a beer review at the end of the day. So uh, yeah, this was bought from um, Aldi in their sort of like Christmas gift section. It was uh, six quid, and you got four bottles of this and a glass. So yeah. But quite a good deal at the end of the day and I'm sure now as I'm recording this it'll be on sale so you might get it for two to three quid can't complain at that can you but uh, I have already had this beer twice so I've got two bottles left and um, yeah so I thought I'd do a, a beer review now um, not that time has any meaning when you're uploading videos to YouTube you see what I mean anyway so I've no idea what the actual brewery is who does this beer um, because there's like three different names on there, and uh, I've not looked it up online. So, uh, this is the Ackerland, Sierra de Noel, Brasse and Salsa. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt a, a French accent. I tried doing this, this take two, and I came out like a, a Latino American Italian. Uh, work that one out. But um, yeah, so it's Biera de Noel, which I guess is beer of Christmas or Christmas beer. So it's a French beer. And uh, on the back it says it's brewed by uh, Brasserie Meteor. So I've no idea who actually brews this, unless it's one of these like contract brews where different territories have different premises. I mean, uh, something like Mann's uh, Brown Ale. You know, people credit that to Thomas Hardy as brewing it, but also people credit it as Marston's. So I've no idea. That's the, the weird and wonderful world of macro beer. Uh, just the stories. I mean, look at the stuff that comes out of uh, Eastern Europe from, like, um, Poland and Russia. All of these, like, I don't know. It, it just fascinates me sometimes a lot more than the story of craft breweries. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure to uh, include any information that I can uh, regarding the history of this beer and the brewery and the whole process, if the information's out there. But I will try and uh, credit this beer to the correct people in the title and the description box down below. So, uh, yeah, Christmas beer. So this is... Uh, ingredients are water, barley malt, sugar, hop, natural orange flavour. So... Uh, what animal's arsehole creates the orange flavouring? I don't know. Uh, yeah, that, that always makes me giggle. The fact that like, if you want a blueberry artificial flavour in your beer or whatever, chances are it's come from the fucking sphincter of a beaver. What a beautiful, beautiful world we live in, ladies and gentlemen. The fact that we can get sweet, fruity flavours from the bowels of dead animals. <laughs> progress so uh, yeah very festive Christmassy nice metallic blue label and yes I've got music on the background so uh, my channel's not profitable anyway so if I get a copyright strike so be it actually no because um, I don't want my channel deleted and if my MacBook would actually fucking work yeah I've been listening to a lot of disco recently so sue me but uh, yeah, Biera de Noel glass, small Biera de Noel bottle, 25 centilitres, 5.8% ABV beer. Let's see what we get with this. Even though I've had it twice, I can't actually remember what I thought of it. It's amazing that, isn't it? Anyway. So, frustratingly, it doesn't even fill like three quarters of the glass. So that's what I don't like about these like smaller bottles. Um, with Christmas, you know, your family gets like the, if you're like a craft beer drinker, you don't tend to buy it. Uh, but, you know, like when you're buying your big boxes of beer, like the Stella Artois, the Carlings and the multi-packs. Uh, we got a, a, a crate of Stella 
because it's a bit that pretty much everyone in the household enjoys. So that's why we're we're always fighting the women in our families because we we love our Stella. Um, ironically, we don't love our Auntie Stella because we kick the shit out of her as well. It's a very shit joke. I'm I'm sorry, but uh, we bought like a, a crate of Stella for I think it was like nine pound for twelve bottles, and like the like. They're ridiculously sized. Like, they're not even 330ml bottles. And it's so friggin' frustrating, the fact that you're paying that price and you're getting less beer. Um, it just... It annoys me, uh, quite frankly. Um, and I do I do like Stellar, actually. Um, revisited that one. Don't think I've actually reviewed it for the channel yet as of recording this review. But, um, yeah, I had Stellar over Christmas. Basically, because I, I pretty much drank all the beers I was saving for Christmas. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Although, I was struggling to fill, like, a full 500ml glass of it. But then again, I had been drinking that day. Um, yeah, lots of alcohol was consumed this Christmas and New Year's. Um, as some of you might understand and can relate. But, uh, yeah, beer in a glass then. And that is a, a lovely sort of golden colour. It's got, like, almost like a slight reddish cranberry juice look to it so it's not like a your regular sort of like orangey amber beer uh no idea what the style of this is even after drinking two of them uh yeah lovely clarity nice uh, slow carbonation and uh, no head to speak of just the lining around the edge of the glass so let's see what we get on that aroma you get that like synthetic orange aroma in there then almost like a a big Belgian yeast aroma, which wouldn't surprise me uh, with the geography of the beer. Because, of course, like the, the French are, are known for the saison and um, that sort of thing. I think so anyway. I'm saying it like I know, my, know what I'm talking about. I don't 90% of the time. Yeah, big Belgian yeasty aroma. It's got that bubblegummy, slightly clove aspect as well. So as like the almost a characteristic of a German hiffer. But yeah, you get that like it reminds me of like orange flavorings in sweets, uh, like jelly sweets almost. Spicy cloviness in there. Almost has like a, a slight spicy grape note as well. Anyway, it doesn't smell too bad. It's not the my favourite aroma when it comes to a beer. Because it's got that Belgian yeast, the breadiness from a wheat beer. And like almost like that slight wit beer character as well with that orange aspect. So three of my least favourite styles. All in one nutritious little beer. So uh, let's see what it tastes like. Cheers. tastes like it smells so it's consistent in that regard yeah bready yeasty drying clovey it has that bubblegum slight vanilla flavor as well herbal like bread with flour on top of it almost subtle spicy tones you do definitely get that like slight syrupy um fake orange flavor but it actually helps lift the beer from being like a bready yeasty mess even though it's not it's not a bready yeasty mess but if you like those flavor profiles then you, you are going to enjoy this sort of beer but like on the aroma it just like brings the the best of three of my least favorite styles into a glass of beer so i'm sure there'll be people who absolutely love this and that like orange almost like liqueur character would just help lift it a little bit and that to me is the as as weird as it sounds for a, a fake flavoring or synthetic flavoring it helps like lift the beer for me personally not too sweet it's got a slight bold mouthfeel but it is a bit watery especially on the back end so it's not really satisfying but it makes it that little bit more drinkable, actually. So, you know, going against my taste buds and what I believe to be good beer for me personally, 
It's weird how those characteristics, which I'd usually have problems with, help make this beer that much more drinkable and enjoyable. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad beer by any stretch. But it's got that, it's got like a slight metallic hop character on the back end as I'm talking now. So it has got that sort of like macro like feel to it. And uh, some could say it's like everything wrong with brewing put together. But it's a tasty product. Um, it's it's never going to bowl me over. In fact, I think the actual the glass that you got in the gift pack is better than the beers themselves. But it's not bad. It's not awful. You wouldn't turn it down. Um, is it like an authentic beer? Yeah, if you like those characteristics of the... You know, the Belgian styles and the French styles and European styles in general and wheat beers and that sort of thing. If you like those characteristics, you're going to enjoy it. But it's not as bold and as heavy on the, on the gut that I find those styles of beer to be. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird... It works for reasons that I don't usually like it to work. If that makes sense. I was trying to fit in a childish sex joke then, but... I don't know, I don't have that capacity to do that. I'm not Stefan Molyneux. But yeah, it's not bad. I've got one more bottle of this. I'll happily yeah, just drink it when I'm doing a session in between other beers, that sort of thing. Is it festive Maybe a slight mulled wine sense the spice and fruits that you'd get in the... Uh, before you put the wine in, if that makes sense. But it's not really like, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn beer, whatever. The fuck does that mean? Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. So in terms of a rating, I'm going to give that one a 6 out of 10. So if you've tried this one, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment box. If it reminds you of any beers that you've had, uh, give me any recommendations, that sort of thing. If any of my friends and fellow beer tubers have reviewed this one, then their links are down below. Check out the appropriate brewery links and that sort of thing. Uh, check out whatever playlist I decide to add this to. I have no idea yet. And uh, yeah, at the very least, check out your local Aldi. And even at six quid, you get them for... Somewhat unique beers and a nice glass. And uh, like I said, especially with Christmas now being over, as of recording, if they've still got boxes of this round for two, three quid, it's a bargain at the end of the day. But uh, I've had much better examples, weirdly, of all of the styles that I get from this. But this has been a little bit more satisfying than even some of the better examples of each style. It's weird, isn't it? It's just, it's a weird beer. It really, really is. But uh, yeah, I'm going to enjoy drinking the rest of this slowly. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching and uh, watching a almost 13 minute review of a beer that should have took me about four minutes to do. But that's the Clueless Drink Away. It's a new year, it's a new Clueless Drinker, not really. And things will never change, so you're doomed as a subscriber. But I appreciate the people who stick around to listen to me just ramble on innately about beers that don't really need to be picked apart the way that I do. Thank you guys for watching, and I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers.